Chapter 4 Fasting Only the pure in heart can make a good soup. Ludwig van Beethoven We live in a polluted world and a lot of this pollution gets stored in our bodies. On top of that, we add toxic substances to our bodies in the form of processed foods, personal care products, environmental pollution, pharmaceutical medications, agricultural chemicals, electromagnetic pollution, radiation, and other man-made things. This man-made toxicity leads to the development of many chronic diseases and ultimately cancer. So it is important to cleanse. Consuming natural foods where whole, full-fat animal products, the feeding foods, are combined with fresh organic plant foods, the cleansing foods, will prevent many diseases. However, eating properly for some people may not be enough in our modern world, full of man-made pollution. That is why it is a good idea for many of us to have periods of cleansing, even those who consider themselves to be fairly healthy. Fasting is one of the oldest and most effective ways of cleaning your body on the inside. Our bodies spend large amounts of energy on digesting and metabolizing food on a daily basis. When we stop eating or reduce it dramatically, the body redirects its energy to other jobs such as removing toxins and parasites and healing itself. Fasting has an excellent record of curing all sorts of incurable conditions from rheumatoid arthritis to cancer. In people without serious illness Regular fasting will clean and rejuvenate the body and prevent disease. What is fasting? Fasting is avoidance of all feeding, building foods, animal foods, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy. On a fast, we can eat all the cleansing foods, plant foods available to us. We can choose a few plant foods and avoid the rest, or we can remove all food completely. There are a number of forms of fasting to choose from. Let us have a look at them starting from the most difficult and restrictive ones. But before we start it, it is important to emphasize that pregnant women and small children must not fast. People who are malnourished and have low body weight also must not fast. Water fasting is complete abstinence from food. The person drinks water and consumes nothing else. It is one of the oldest and very effective ways to cleanse and rejuvenate your body. Many religions advocate regular water fasting. No matter how short or long you make your water fast, you will derive benefits from it. You can fast at home one day a week or three days at a time every few months or just miss an evening meal a couple of times per week. But if you want to attempt a longer water fast more than three days, of one week, two weeks, three weeks, some people fast as long as 45 days, it is essential to do so under professional supervision. There are many nuances to a long water fast and it is easy to get into trouble if you are not experienced. Coming out of a long water fast is also quite a special procedure and needs professional supervision. There are some well-established fasting clinics around the world. It is expensive to go to a clinic, but if you have never fasted in your life and would like to do a long fast, it is worth doing so. Having done the first water fast under supervision, you will have gained experience and may be able to fast again without supervision. In many people's minds, fasting is associated with vegetarianism. Indeed, quite a few books on fasting finish off with an author's ardent attempt to turn the reader into a vegetarian or a vegan. Unfortunately, that pushes people away from the whole idea of fasting. Let's be absolutely clear about this. Fasting has nothing to do with vegetarianism or veganism. No matter what your dietary persuasion is, you can benefit from the healing and rejuvenation, rejuvenating properties of water fasting. Many books on fasting tell you to come out of water fasting on plant foods only. Again, this is nothing but an attempt to turn the reader into a vegetarian. 
coming out of water fasting should be done by slow introduction of both animal foods and plants. For a detailed explanation on how to come out from any fast, please look at the end of this chapter. Juice fasting. A juice fast is when the person consumes only freshly pressed juice and vegetable juices, including green juices, as well as water. It is often called a juice feast as a person can drink unlimited amounts of freshly pressed delicious juices, usually 12 glasses a day. The juices should contain no fiber, so they have to be strained well. Unfortunately, during juice fasting, large amounts of plant sugars are consumed with the juices, so this approach can be a problem for people with unstable blood sugar, candida overgrowth, diabetes, and other sugar-sensitive health problems. There are a number of well-written books on juice fasting with detailed explanations and testimonies. Liquitarianism is another form of fasting. It refers to avoidance of all food apart from clear liquids, herbal teas, vegetable broth, miso soup, rice milk, nut milk made from almonds, coconut, sunflower seeds, etc. Freshly pressed juices, green drinks such as spirulina and chlorella, rice water and other clear liquids including water. Many health benefits have been reported by people using this form of fasting. I would recommend adding bone broth and meat stock to this form of fasting, particularly for people with digestive problems. While your gut is resting on the fast, the meat stock and bone broth will provide substances that will heal and repair your digestive wall. Fruit fasting. On a fruit fast, the person eats only raw organic fruit of their choice. A mixture of seasonal juicy fruit is recommended. Chewing the fruit thoroughly is very important to reduce the sugar content, which is digested by enzymes in your saliva and to break apart the fiber. This fast can only be attempted when there is an ample supply of fresh organic fruit from your own orchard or somebody else's organic orchard nearby. Fruit must ripen in the tree, on the tree, so it must be local. It is not a good idea to try this fast on fruit bought in a supermarket. Even labeled organic, commercial fruit is likely to have been grown on exhausted soils and picked unripe. Mono diets. On mono diets, people eat only one food and nothing else for a period of time. Examples of these are brown rice mono diet, milk only diet, grapes only diet, apples only diet, etc. The idea of a mono diet was proposed by a German health educator and fasting enthusiast, Arnold Ehret, in the early 1900s. It was popularized by a South African political activist, Joanna Brandon, in the 1920s, who claimed to have cured herself from a stomach cancer by eating only grapes for some 40 days. She wrote a book about it called The, the Grape Cure. Veganism, eating only plants, is a form of fasting. It is essential that all the plants are organic and in their natural form, preferably cooked at home. The plants provide a huge amount of cleansing substances for the body to use, particularly when they are consumed raw, sprouted, or fermented. Cooked plants, particularly starchy plants, provide a lot of glucose for the body to process. The body can use a limited amount of glucose for producing energy. If glucose comes in excess, the body converts it into fat and stores it in the fat tissues. Plants provide a lot of fiber and indigestible starch, which feed the gut flora in the bowel. If the person has a damaged gut flora dominated by pathogens, this can create a lot of gas production, abnormal stools, and abdominal discomfort. Plants are unable to provide enough protein or fat suitable for building the human body or sustaining its physical structure. That is why veganism must not be followed for long periods of time and must never be imposed on pregnant women, babies, 
growing children or malnourished people with low body mass. There are several varieties of a vegan fast. Some people eat all the plants available to them. Grains, including bread, beans and pulses, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and vegetable oils. Other people avoid grains, particularly people with gluten intolerances and digestive problems. Every person designs his or her diet depending on individual tolerance and preferences. Availability of organic fresh produce is a big factor in designing your vegan fast. All processed foods and drinks made with flour, sugar, soy, vegetable oils, and chemical additives must be avoided. Otherwise, there will be no cleansing but more pollution coming into your body. It is essential to listen to your body and introduce animal foods when you get a desire for them. This desire is a signal from your body that it has finished cleansing and wants to be fed. People who follow veganism for emotional or spiritual reasons often don't listen to their bodies and miss that point, which leads to serious nutritional deficiencies and health problems. This is what happened to Helen. Remember those Hindu pilgrims? They follow a vegan fast for a maximum of 41 days. For the majority of people, just a few days or a couple of weeks is usually enough, maximum two months. How to come out from a long fast. During fasting, the production of digestive enzymes is reduced dramatically. So we cannot suddenly fill our stomachs with lots of food because we will not be able to digest it. We need food that is easy to digest and we need to introduce it slowly and gradually, starting with small amounts. As a body has not been fed for a while, we need to introduce feeding foods straight away meats, fish, eggs, and dairy. It is best to introduce food in its raw state because raw, fresh food is equipped with active enzymes to assist your digestive system in breaking this food down. We need to consume raw animal foods in combination with herbs, raw honey, and freshly squeezed lemon juice, which also have many enzymes to assist digestion. We should add natural salt and black pepper to the meals to stimulate stomach acid production. We can have some raw vegetables with our animal foods to add some fiber and variety. We can have some raw fruit and nuts between meals as snacks as long as a person is not prone to flatulence, belching, or reflux. The only cooked food we should consume when coming out of a long fast is meat stock. Freshly made, from, freshly made meat stock is soothing and healing for the gut lining. It will help your digestive system recover from the fast quickly and fully. Let us have a look at what to eat day by day. Day one after the fast. Start your day with a cup of hot meat stock. Chicken stock is the best. To make it, put a whole chicken, including the feet and some goblets, some giblets, into a six liter pan, add a tablespoon of natural salt and fill the pan with water. Bring to the boil, then reduce the heat to a simmer, cover and cook for two hours. When ready, strain the stock into another pan. Cool it down and keep it in a refrigerator. The cooked chicken from the stock should be consumed by somebody else. Your gut is not ready for it after a long fast. Add a tablespoon of live yogurt or kefir into every cup of the meat stock you drink to provide probiotic microbes. In order to not kill these beneficial microbes, make sure that the stock is not too hot when adding the yogurt or kefir. Before putting the chicken into the pot for making the stock, cut out one breast from it leaving the skin on the chicken. The skin should be cooked in the stock do not make the breast wet. If you washed it, then dry it well. Cut the breast into bite-sized pieces. Squeeze half a lemon onto it. Add a half a teaspoon of honey, some freshly ground black pepper, and natural salt. A tablespoon of homemade raw organic yogurt or kefir. A few cloves, cloves of fresh garlic. 
chopped finely, some chopped parsley or dill and olive oil. If you have some fermented vegetables, you can add a tablespoon of sauerkraut, kimchi, fermented carrots, fermented cucumbers, or any other home fermented vegetables. Mix all the ingredients well, cover the dish, and leave to marinate at room temperature if it is not too hot or in the fridge <clears throat> for two hours. This is your lunch and dinner. You can have it with a small salad made from organic lettuce, onion, tomato, and cucumber. Use lemon juice, natural salts, and olive oil as dressing. Try not to eat all of it at once. Eat half at lunch and another half at dinner. Chew your food very well in order to make it more digestible. In the evening, drink another cup of meat stock you made. Don't forget to add some kefir or yogurt to the stock. Drink some water between meals and freshly made herbal teas. The teas should be made from loose, fresh, or dried herbs, not from tea bags. Fresh mint and lavender leaves, willow leaves and small branches, ginger root, and other herbs will make a refreshing tea. Before bed, put a cup of organic shelled sunflower seeds into a glass jar and cover the seeds with water. They will soak overnight and become crunchy and easy to digest. In the morning, drain the water, cover the jar with a clean cloth, and leave the seeds to sprout. You can have a teaspoon of these seeds tomorrow with your lunch. Day two after the fast. Start your day with a cup of hot meat stock. Yesterday's meat stock is fine. With the raw egg mixed in it, both the white and the yolk. Make sure to buy eggs that come from pastured organic chickens. In about an hour, have another cup of meat stock with a raw egg in it. Don't forget to add some kefir or yogurt to the stock. Made the same marinade as yesterday but with raw lamb or beef this time. The meat needs to be fresh and dry, no added water. Eat a small portion for lunch and a small portion for dinner. You can have it with some ripe avocado, a teaspoon of your soaked sunflower seeds, and a small salad. In the evening, drink another cup of the meat stock you made. Don't forget to add some kefir or yogurt. You can add another fresh egg to the stock. Day three after the fast. For breakfast, you can have two soft boiled eggs and a cup of hot meat stock with some kefir or yogurt in it. Eat a good amount of raw organic butter with your eggs. For every mouthful of egg, add a mouthful of butter and chew them together. The stock, which you made on the first day, will still be fresh enough for you to consume today, as long as it has been kept in the fridge. For lunch, make the same marinoid with any fresh meat or fish you have. Eat some ripe avocado and a salad with it. Add two tablespoons of sprouted sunflower seeds to your salad. In the afternoon, have some herbal tea. You can have a little honey with it, some fruit, and a few raw nuts. In the evening, drink another cup of meat stock. Don't forget to add some kefir or yogurt. You can add one to two fresh raw eggs to the stock. Day four after the fast. You can start your day with soft boiled eggs and butter again as yesterday. You can have a small salad and add it to the rest of your sprouted sunflower seeds. You can have a cup of herbal tea and eat some raw cheese and honey. Today you will need to make fresh meat stock. You can make it from lamb, pork, beef, or fish. You need bones, joints, skin, a bit of meat, and offcuts to make good stock. Add water, salt, and freshly crushed black pepper corns and cook for two to three hours. If you want to make a fish stock, you will need to fill half of the pan with fresh small fish or with skins, heads, and bones of larger fish. Fish stock can be cooked for one hour. Strain the hot stock into a clean dry pan cool and keep in the fridge. Take some of this stock and make a soup. Add chopped vegetables, carrot, onion, cabbage, celery, courgette, or any other available vegetables. 
and cook for 25 to 30 minutes. While the soup is cooking, take all the soft tissues off the bones and joints which you, have, which you made the stock with and chop them into bite-sized pieces. Extract the bone marrow from tubular bones, bang the cooked bone on a thick wooden chopping board, and the bone marrow will fall out. When the soup is ready, add the meats and bone marrow to the soup together with some chopped garlic and parsley or dill. Enjoy this soup with some sour cream, kefir, or yogurt. In the afternoon, have some herbal tea. You can have a little honey with it and some raw high fat cheese. In the evening, drink another cup of meat stock. Don't forget to add some kefir or yogurt. You can add one to two fresh raw eggs to the stock. In the following days, you can gradually introduce cooked meats, fish and eggs, and all other foods. Avoid grains, beans, and lentils for a few days. They are difficult to digest. Allow your digestive system to adjust to food and start producing normal amounts of digestive enzymes before introducing these plant foods. Avoid all processed foods. Only food made at home from fresh natural ingredients should be consumed. The animal foods you have introduced after your fast will stimulate production of your own digestive enzymes. These enzymes are proteins. Animal foods will provide your body with plenty of building materials to make these enzymes from. Some people are concerned about eating raw meat because of fear of infections. There is no need to fear this if the meat is fresh and local, particularly if it is organic and pasture fed. Avoid raw pork, but fresh beef, lamb, organic chicken, and game can be eaten raw. Fresh meat has many active enzymes that protect it from microbes. Apart from that, the marinade that you add to the meat will remove any possibility of infection. Lemon juice, garlic, olive oil, salt, and black pepper are known to have some antimicrobial properties. If you add some fermented vegetables and or homemade raw yogurt or kefir, they will provide probiotic beneficial microbes, which will not allow any pathogenic ones to develop in the food. Raw meat stimulates stomach acid production, which is a powerful antiseptic. A healthy stomach at the beginning of a meal can produce enough acid to have pH 1 to 2, which kills most microbes in existence. Eating fresh raw meat is perfectly safe and will provide many benefits. Unadulterated protein, fats, enzymes, vitamins, and minerals, all in the most digestible form for the human body. When we cook meat, we change the structure, altering the structure of proteins, destroying enzymes, and many vitamins, and reducing its nutritional value. People have recovered from many chronic illnesses by eating raw meat, raw eggs, and raw dairy. Traditional cultures around the world ate raw meat, raw fish, raw eggs, and raw milk products for millennia. There are written accounts of how Native American people ate raw meat. When Europeans came to America, they forced the natives to start cooking their meat. Eskimos and other people of the far north consume most of their fish and meat raw, fresh, dried, or fermented. These traditions still remain in some of our modern recipes. Gravlax in Sweden, steak tartare in France, beef, carpaccio, and carne cruda in Italy, sashimi in Japan, yuke in Korea, kitfo in Ethiopia, beef lab in Thailand, steak chi kufta in Armenia, raw liver salad in Lebanon, and many others. Raw meat should be best quality, locally produced, grass-fed, and preferably organic. Very fresh and should not be in contact with plastics. Only glass or wood should be used because plastics leach toxic chemicals into the meat that attract pathogenic microbes. Some people are concerned about eating raw eggs. There is no need to fear eating them as long as they come from healthy chickens, 
which range free on pasture. Salmonella infected eggs come from infected chickens, which is common amongst birds kept in cages by the commercial industrial agriculture. Healthy chickens have strong immune systems that protect them from infections. However, it is important to understand that for the great majority of people, salmonella is not a dangerous infection. For centuries, salmonella infection used to be considered benign by the medical profession and no treatment was needed. All you get from salmonella poisoning is a few days of diarrhea, which cleanses your digestive system and leaves you healthier than before. As long as you eat homemade soups and stews with meat stock and kefir or yogurt during this infection, there will be no complications. The problem is that our modern population eats a lot of processed foods. As a result, their digestive and immune systems are not healthy. They are prone to infections and get complications from them. That is where the fear of salmonella comes from. Raw eggs are some of the healthiest foods in the world. Raw egg yolk can be compared with human breast milk. It absorbs almost without needing digestion and provides perfect nutrition for us. Protein, amino acids, zinc, B vitamins, fats, cholesterol, and many other essential nu nutrients. Raw eggs provide necessary protein for the body to remove toxic metals, mercury, lead, aluminum, and other toxic metals and other toxins. Cooked eggs may lose that ability. Eating raw eggs has been a healthy practice for people for millennia all over the world. Today, many people, particularly the medical profession, are afraid of eating raw eggs and cook them for a long time, which destroys many nutrients and makes the eggs more difficult to digest and less beneficial for health. We talked about raw milk in the previous chapters. Let us just say here that raw milk is very safe to consume. In fact, milk should be consumed only raw. It must come from natural breeds of cow, goat, or other animals. No artificial breeds created in a laboratory. The animals must be on natural pasture with many grasses and herbs and no agricultural chemicals. And hygiene practices must be adhered to when milking the animal. The milk must not be pasteurized, homogenized, or pr processed in any other way. From raw milk, we can make raw yogurt, raw kefir, raw cheese, raw cream, and sour cream, and raw butter. All of these foods provide excellent nutrition for us and are much easier to digest than processed milk products. Following this program for coming out of a long fast will allow your body to recover quickly and restore its health and vitality with ease. You will have no digestive system symptoms which are common in people who come out of a fast on a vegan program. Flatulence, bloating, abdominal discomfort, and abnormal stools. If you are prone to digestive problems, introduce salads, sunflower seeds, nuts, and fruit later, after at least a week, starting with small amounts. Your first introduction of plant matter should happen on the fourth day when you make soup. Cooked vegetables in the soup are much easier to digest than raw vegetables and they will not cause any abdominal problems. If you would like to learn more about healing your digestive system, please read my book, Gut in Psychology Syndrome, GAPS. Is fasting natural for us? Regular fasting used to be a norm for humanity for most of our existence because of irregular availability of food. There was no refrigeration or supermarkets. All food was seasonal. You had vegetables and fruit only in the growing season, meat only when you had a chance to kill an animal, and eggs only in the times when the birds were laying. Food was difficult to obtain for many people, particularly poor people and city dwellers. Practically everyone had periods of time when they had very little to eat, and the choice of foods was limited. Those periods were not welcome, but they allowed people's bodies to cleanse and rejuvenate. And when people could obtain 
food, this food was natural, wholesome, and nourishing. When humanity discovered fuel oil and learned how to extract and use it, industrial agriculture appeared. Powerful machinery and agricultural chemicals allowed humanity to start producing unprecedented amounts of food. Never in the history of humanity had people so much to eat. Seasonality of food had disappeared. One can buy anything at any time of the year in a supermarket. Industrially produced food is full of agricultural chemicals and has a lower nutritional value. On top of that, a lot of foods in the supermarkets are processed, which makes them unhealthy. This abundance of food has become the main cause of the health crisis in our modern world. Not only are people eating low quality food, but the natural periods of fasting have disappeared. Today we have to make a special effort to fast, which is difficult and takes determination. However, those who make this effort derive many benefits for their health and vitality. Is it absolutely necessary for all of us to fast? If you are healthy and are eating animal foods cooked at home from natural ingredients, fresh meat, fresh fish, fresh eggs, and raw dairy, in combination with organic plants, and if you are avoiding all processed industrial foods, then your body will be strong enough to deal with common toxicity in the environment. It isn't necessary for you to do serious fasting. Just to miss an evening meal now and then may be enough or replace a usual meal with a vegan one once or twice a week. However, people who are exposed to high levels of toxicity at work, through dentistry, or in other ways, and people with cancer or another chronic illness may have to consider serious fasting as a way of cleansing their bodies. If you would like to do a long fast longer than three days, it is essential to do it under professional supervision. Just keep in mind that it is vital to have a normal body weight to fast. People who are underweight and malnourished must not fast. Instead, they should consider following the GAPS nutritional protocol described in my GAPS book. This protocol will equip your body with quality building materials, strength and stamina to cleanse and to recover. Mark Twain had this to say about a healthy lifestyle. The only way to keep your health is to eat when you don't want, drink what you don't like, and do what you'd rather not. If you feel that way, then perhaps it is time for you to do a bit of fasting.